during the course of this training, we'll be discussing folders, designer folders, users and groups, and we'll do a flow designer overview. Let's begin. We'll go ahead and start with folders. Most components and decisions are treated as folders. There are standard folders, which will have base actions, but no ability to create designer elements. These types of folders can be secured by using permissions and inheritance. They're also a great tool for storage or organization. Designer folders are a special type of folder that are used for storing design work, such as forms, pages, flows, rules, reports, and integrations. Let's go ahead and jump into decisions and try this out for ourselves. Let's go ahead and create first a folder at root. Go ahead and create a folder. Can you give it a name? For this example, we're going to call it Decisions Training. And we're going to make sure to select at root. Now that we created our standard folder, we'll go ahead and create our designer folder. We go ahead and right click, go to create folder. This time we're going to select create designer project folder. If we're going to call this utilizing our first name, followed by folder at the end. We do not need to check at root at this point. We're going to go ahead and select create. And now we have our standard folder and our designer folder. Let's jump into users and groups. Administrators and decisions can create user accounts and groups of users. Permissions can be handled on both the user and group level. Utilizing groups within decisions makes user management easier. And of course, guests can also be enabled. In regards to security, Authentication is granted by login. Every user who will run a process needs an account. Decision supports integration with Active Directory or SFO. Guest accounts, once again, can be created as well. Permissions are inherited based on group membership, including all users, designers, and administrators. And the ability to create own groups does exist. Now let's take a look at how we would manage users and groups within the decisions instance. We would first need to select this settings pane on our left-hand side here. Then we would select security. And under security, we would see accounts and also groups. Here we could, under accounts, we can view all the accounts that exist within this instance. And if we needed to create it or add a new account, you can do so by going up to the top here. So I can create an account and then filling in the following information. The two components that are required are an email and a password. Other information is not required, but can be filled in as needed. To manage groups, we would simply go to groups under security. If we highlight any of these groups here on the right-hand side, we'll be able to see all the accounts that are part of that selected group. If we wanted to create a new group, we would go up to the top, select create a group, give it a group name. And there are other details that we could specify as we're creating our, our group as well. Now, I know learning a new lingo can be daunting, especially when it comes to terms that uh, you might have never heard before. We understand this, and so we created a terms glossary that can be found within, a, within our documentation. Uh, this is a glossary of terms that you will need to be familiar with during your training, uh, so please take advantage of this glossary. 
Up next, we'll do a flow designer overview. Flows and decisions are made up of different components, including the automation itself, which is set up and configured by designing a flow, utilizing steps and sequence to automate a particular process. We then have steps, which are business functions or methods. Mapping, these are steps that are that take in data and output data as well. And finally, the debugger that serves as a tool to incrementally test modifications as we are building within decisions. The flow, flow designer itself is made up of a few different components, including the info panel, the action bar, steps toolbox, steps properties, and of course, the debugger. The info panel is where you'll find metadata along with sample data, the data explorer, and the steps toolbox. The action bar. The, fa the following options live within the action bar found on the top of your screen in the orange ribbon. This includes save, close, and validate options, the debugger, dependencies and integrations, history, undo, redo, the ability to zoom, turn on and off the grid, and of course, rotation. Within the steps toolbox is where you'll find a variety of steps that can be found and or searched for. New steps are added by simply dragging and dropping or utilizing the quick add method within the flow designer. Step properties serve as a way to interact with steps within a flow. You can edit step dialog and also configure step, steps utilizing the properties toolbar. Finally, we have the debugger. The debugger allows us to, to test our flows by checking how many times a step is hit checking the path, execution time, inputs and outputs, creating and utilizing unit tests and data samples. Let's take a look at our info panel within a decisions instance. The info panel can be found over here on our left-hand side. And this is where we'll find our Toolbox, our sample and sample and unit test, our data explorer, also our steps explorer, and we can also look at steps by type. Now let's take a look at our action bar. In our action bar, identified here by the orange ribbon on the top of your screen. We'll, be, we'll see a few different options, including save, the ability to create a checkpoint, undo and redo, cut and copy, of course, paste, view. And here we can view the grid, turn it on and off, allow rotation, and reset our zoom. The debugger, our compare and dependencies options here, all live within the action bar. Let's now take a look at our steps toolbox. Within our steps toolbox, we'll have a few different options in terms of how to search for and look up steps, including searching, using utilizing the search bar at the very top. We have our favorite steps here. And then we have a variety of different folder trees where we'll find more steps. New steps can be added to our flow by simply grabbing, dragging, and dropping a step as needed, or by adding, utilizing our quick add method, grabbing the arrow, dragging it over. And then from here, we can search or we can select a step that we're looking 
to utilize. Now let's take a look at step properties. We can look at step properties by simply selecting the step that we're looking to work with. And we'll see on our right-hand side here, our properties toolbar pop open for that specific, specific step. From here, we can edit step dialog, and of course configure the step utilizing our properties toolbar. Let's now take a look at our debugger, which we'll find on our actual bar. From here, we'll have the ability to look at sample data, utilizing create unit test, and actually start begin debugging. Let's go ahead and utilize this unit test. From here, we would be able to see path along with execution time, inputs and outputs, along with other information that's valuable during testing. 